Okay, today's interview is with Mark and his pickup truck here. So what year and make and model is this? It's a 1967 Ford F-100. 67 was one of the few years in the F-100s that it was, has a lot of one year only features because it was a transition year. Okay, that makes sense. And where did you find this vehicle? I bought this vehicle in Lebanon Junction, Kentucky. The guy had bought the truck from a monument company and started redone a, a resto mod on it. And I guess he ran into some issues and he just quit on it. So basically when I got it, it was just a cab the, he did have a rear end for it and he had a front end rolled under but I guess the project kind of overwhelmed him and he quit on it so and you had to go and find the rest of the parts I'm sure locally well, or yeah some of the parts he already had he just didn't have them on the truck so uh, with the exception he had no engine and transmission but he had all the drivetrain front and rear for it. this truck has a an independent rear end suspension system under it and it's out of a 94 Lincoln Mark 8. The, the the rear end that came out in the truck was just a straight axle, but this actually has independent rear suspension. And uh, he had already bought that. He bought a kit to put it in, but he never completed the job. He just sort of, like I say, I think he got overwhelmed with the amount of work it was going to take and just quit on it. So. And it's easy to get overwhelmed for sure. sure. Yeah. Why this particular truck? I've just always liked trucks. I've, I've I've never really been into cars. One of the reasons I haven't been into cars is for the cost of restoring a car when you get to the interior. You have pretty much twice the amount of money as you would on a truck. And I've just always liked trucks to drive. I don't know. I like setting up in trucks rather than setting in a car. So. Well, that makes sense also, yes. So how long did it take you to complete this project? Or first, what year did you get the truck? I bought the truck in 2009. And during that time, it set for several years. Uh, I, I'd done a little bit on it. I actually got the rear end suspension under the frame and got it got it rolling, and just brought it home. And then waited and waited to get started on the body work. And then during that time, I started a business venture, and that took me out of the the extra time it took to work on it for probably another five years. So. Uh, but to be honest, I really just started working on the truck in the last year, year and a half, and really, you know, devoting more time to it every day to try to get it done because I was getting tired of looking at it setting in pieces. So had to get started on it, right? Started. Well, let's take a look under the hood, if you don't mind. Start a tour of this truck. This truck, uh, after three separate engines and transmissions, this has actually been the third. And since you had it since i've had it uh i bought a couple junkyard engines at first neither worked out one ran hot the other one had a knock in it so i decided i was just going to spend the extra money and this what you see here is a 2014 ford coyote motor with a six-speed automatic transmission uh, there's a company that i bought it from that does take out motors out of wrecked vehicles and they build the wire and harness and redo the computer and they send you the engine and transmission on the wood pallet. Hook a battery to it, drop the fuel pump in it, bucket of gas and start the engine right there on the crate. So that's that's what I bought this time. So I made sure I had a, a good engine and transmission. So. Is there anything else special under the hood that uh, not really a car it, truck it, enthusiast would be interested well, in? The, the, not so much under the hood. The front suspension on this is a Ford Crown Victoria car. And a lot of the Ford guys do this on these trucks because it gives you rack and pinion steering. It's an aluminum cradle that the motor sets in. Uh, they drive good. They're the right width for the truck. And that's what, that's what this has under. The guy that I bought it from also had that. And he just had it sort of rolled under the truck, nothing attached. And we went ahead and mounted all of that and got that put in it. So. But other than that, I, I mean, I put an aluminum radiator with the uh, cooling fans, and that was a that was probably a, it's, it's called cold case radiator. It's, a, it's one of the, the better aluminum radiators. Put put uh, vintage air heat heat and air conditioning on it, and uh, that's probably as far as under the hood goes. That's probably the, the most mods it's had. These inner fender wells 
on this. My brother and I, your husband, <laughs> made these, and uh, we we bent them on a metal brake, rolled the beads in them, and uh, textured paintable bed liner on them so I could paint them body color. But that's probably the most mod under the hood the truck has, and I wanted those because I wanted to close in the gap between the motor and the far wall, and uh, that's that's why I did what I did on that. So this grill. It's, it's 67 only. This is the original aluminum grill. Now how it got through all of those years without dents or, or, or bends in it. Yeah, no collision know. or anything, no I collision. guess. One of the headlight surrounds had a little peck bend on the edge of it and I was able to just tap it out and, and sand it down and rebuff it. But, uh, you know, the grill itself is kind of unique because you can buy aftermarket grills for them now that's chrome steel chrome but as far as an all aluminum grill in that kind of shape they're really really hard to find and you think it was a delivery type truck originally this truck belonged to a monument company in bargetown and the story i heard was it had like forty thousand miles on it when i bought it and it sat in the garage most of the time so it really never seen much weather and uh, of course you know it was a work truck it came out with a six-cylinder engine with a three-speed transmission in it so it was definitely made to work, but I don't believe it ever seen a lot of work other than maybe hauling some monuments you know, to the graveyard or something. Interesting. Like All right, so let's take a peek at the bed back here. The bed, I done the same uh, bed liner tenable texture on it, but I didn't want to paint it body color and clear coat it uh, because I knew it would probably get skinned up just putting chairs in and out it and that kind of thing going to cruises. So. Uh, I made a, I put a Mustang gas tank between the frame rails and the gas door courses and the bed on it. What about the tailgate here? The tailgate is an aftermarket tailgate and I did buy the original Ford surround piece for it there. And of course the truck doesn't have a front or a back rear bumper. I put a roll pan instead of the, the bumper on it. I just like that because it makes it a little cleaner look on the back. And the extra badge there the extra badge just says coyote uh, we just bought those to put on it so i can remind myself it does have a coyote engine in it <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel that it drives a little bit peppier or something oh, yeah. or yeah, than a, a, the, the engines you know it's well over 300 horsepower and and with this lighter truck it's 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 pretty fast i mean you, I could see driving it daily, you could probably get a lot of speeding tickets if you didn't watch what you was doing. And low gas mileage, maybe? Actually not. Uh, I drove this truck to the Street Rod Nationals four days in a row, three days in a row, and I averaged 20.2 miles per gallon. That is impressive. Yeah, because with the Coyote with the six-speed automatic makes it geared high for, you know, for road use and uh, highway use. And, and even the, the Coyote Ford trucks, and cars that these come out in actually got good gas mileage so well i noticed there was exhaust pipes on both sides of the truck here yeah the, which is the reason, different the reason the exhaust comes out the side is because with the independent rear suspension you don't have clearance to go over the wheel well like, like you would all the way under the straight axle green. so i just brought them back to the front part of the, the back wheel and, and made an exit there because you might have could have took it to an exhaust shop and they might have been able to to route something around there but they probably wouldn't have been able to keep the same, same diameter pipe and those tips are for an early model corvette and let me see if i can tip the camera sure let's see if i can tip the camera under there and just see so the pipe is angled up but the, the tip actually angles down to clear the, the bed sides Okay, since I'm familiar with this truck a little bit, I do know that this is not original Correct. interior. So let's take a peek inside. The seats and the dash pad are from a company called TMI that I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. And I bought those seats and the dash pad from them uh, with that, that particular color. Uh, then after that, I bought extra material from them which was in the tune of about four and a half yards, I think. And uh, my brother and myself made the console and covered it. The original metal door panels with just the covering on them that we glued on. We 
with an eight-piece door pulls. This truck come out with no armrest or no door pulls at all. In 67, it, it was a, like I say, it was a pretty much plain Jane truck, so there wasn't anything like that on, on the door panel at all to pull the door with. So use the door handle when you close the door on them. So I decided I would incorporate the leather strap on the, the door panel so it has something to pull it close with. The headliner, we done the same thing. We took a stock headliner and uh, padded it and covered it. And the trim around the headliner, the, it was metal and we wrapped it in the same color material. Here's a closer look at the interior. Is the steering wheel original? No, it's, it's aftermarket tilt column, chrome column. The shifter in the truck come out of a uh, Ford King Ranch that we incorporated in the console. And it's set up for the six-speed automatic. That's why I used that on it. Was there a special story about the clock that you got the, there? The clock I just put in to sort of make it blend in with the, the old school of the truck. Well, I got nothing special about it other than just a little 12-volt clock. The gauges on it are uh, Dakota Digital. And... That, that's the company that makes them. So I have like the gear display readout shows up on the dash. Uh, of course, water temperature, it's got a tack, speedometer, the whole, the whole setup. So. And here's the console that was custom made for the truck. And you even did behind the seats, didn't you? Yes. And carpet. And a speaker for yes. the radio. And I just have a Bluetooth amp, and I use uh, Sirius radio on my phone. So uh, that's another thing on these trucks. The 67, which was one year only, the radio on it is real hard to find any kind of aftermarket retrofit radio because of the, the opening is so small for the, the display. Uh, they just used them, like I say, one year, and... Uh, then they changed it. The heater and air controls, well in this case, the heater controls on the truck originally, on the, the 69s and up are underneath the radio. 67, they're on the, the right side of the dash under the gauges, and that's a one year only. So I didn't really note, realize that when I bought the truck, but when I went to trying to find stuff for it, I found out 67 was sort of the transition year and there was just not a lot of stuff available. For... Well, tell us about the tires and wheels the wheels are uh, of course american racing i have 20 inch on the rear 18s on the front the uh, the tires are regular tires and those are red line aftermarket kits that i put on there so those tires didn't come out with red lines on them i would put those on the, the tires so 18 uh, on the front yes and 20 20 inch on the back 20 on the back uh, and a coyote badge on the yes. the fender there. Anything else special about the vehicle that we might not have covered? Uh, the glass in it, I put uh, the door glass and the wing glass and the back glass, I put gray tint glass in it, which, you know, they come out with clear glass. And I just done that to, to give it a little more custom look, plus you don't have to worry about window tint that peels and, and comes off. So. Well, one thing I didn't ask is, why this color scheme? What is the color or do you even know? Yeah, the, the blue is a General Motors color and it's called Arrival Blue. They put it on some Cobalts and some some uh, Camaros and I think even a few of the, the bigger cars that General Motors made. And the silver is a BMW. The reason I picked the colors is I wanted it to look old school like something Ford might have done in two-tone and it is two-toned the original design that Ford come out with their two-tone trucks on, but it has a metallic colors on both. The blue is actually a metallic pearl, which is uh, in the sunlight, it, it shows up you know, with a lot of metallic in it, of course, and the silver is just a metallic silver. But Ford would have probably maybe used the silver in the day, a, 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 ver, a variation of that, but they really never had a blue that color. Their blues was kind of a lighter blue, or a real dark blue, so. But that's that's the reason I picked it, just because I wanted it to look a little bit old school, like Ford might have would have done it that color. So. so how many coats do you think 
uh, it has on it. The, the blue base has three coats, and I put four coats of clear on it, and then, of course, wet sand and buffed it. Uh, I don't have any high-tech spray booth or anything, so I have to account for what little bit of dirt and stuff I have to get out of it after I paint one, so I usually try to put a little extra on it so I can <laughs> cover for the dirt that I'm going to get in it, so. It's a lot of work, that's for sure. Yeah, I wish I'd have kept count of the hours I didn't, but and it doesn't matter. I mean, I enjoy doing it, so it doesn't matter if it took me 15 years, you know. Right, <laughs> so. for sure. Is there a next project? There is. It's a long way from being finished, but I bought a uh, 81 Chevy square body short bed. Well, it actually was a long bed, and we're making it a short bed. I've got the frame shortened now, but uh, it's probably going to be spring. I hope to have it done because I'm working on it quite a bit. Uh, you know, I try to spend three to four days a week on it now that I'm retired so I can devote a little more time to, to that plus keep everything else going that I need to. So. We'll have to come back and do a yeah. interview on this one yeah, later. Can't, can't really tell much about it in the stage it's in now other than the fact it's uh, got epoxy primer on the cab. Uh, I have done some stuff to the motor but I'm updating it and the big. I had to find the short bed for this to, to convert it over, and I was lucky enough to find a good used short bed that I can put on it. So, And you found this locally also? Yes. Both yeah. pieces? Both pieces. The truck came from uh, about 30 miles from here, and the, the bed came from about 15 miles from here. So uh, there's still a few extra used parts out there. It's just sometimes it's a little harder to find them. So. And I know you have a YouTube channel I that did. you're documenting this particular restore, yeah. and we'll share that. But if you can tell us what uh, the the YouTube channel started is called Mark's Rides, and what I've basically done on this particular truck, I started from the beginning, from the very first day I started tearing it apart, and each week I put out a video, usually on Friday, about it and what I'm doing. I don't know that I'll continue that particular procedure on the next build, but I did want to do it on this truck because we're building this truck to sell and I want to be able to have a video where somebody can, can look at it and say, oh, you done this to it. You know, this was done, you know, okay. And I'm by far no professional, but I don't want to send a bunch of stuff out that's, you know, full of Bondo and covering up rust and just a bunch of hidden stuff. So I guess that's one reason I started doing this on the video. So. How many vehicles do you think you've restored? Uh, you know, fully restored, probably five or six. But you don't realize how long it takes to do one, but when you was doing it just part-time like I was before, you know, we're catching a day here and there. It takes a lot of time. To... Was well, there anything else that I need to know about your no. restore I guess I'm crazy habit? Like, I guess I'm crazy like every other person that has a uh, old car or truck. I just, you know, I just enjoy doing them and, you know, can't ever make any money at it, no, because, you know, it takes too long to get one completed, but, you know, it's something fun to do. I did think of one more thing to ask. Okay. Uh, you take your vehicle to car cruises and mm -hmm. car shows. Uh -huh. Has there been any awards that you've uh, won with your truck? This truck, I've only been to two shows uh, here locally. Uh, one of them I got a, I think it was a top 10 at a little local fire department. And then a bigger award I got at, at uh, St. Paul Cruise. And uh, I got the best old f antique, or best antique Ford there, which I don't know whether it's antique or not, I guess you consider it antique. I consider it more of a street rod, but, but I did I did win that, so. And it was the best at their show, and there were, how many vehicles were there at uh, their show? Well, that day there was like 220 there, but you know, that particular award, because it was Ford, I'm not sure how many Fords were there. I'm right. Sure probably, you know, probably 30 or 40% Fords, because you usually see more Chevys than you do Fords at, at car cruises so, and shows. So, But so, it's kind of a unique truck. There's not there's not many 67s and short beds around, so that part I, I really like about it. So. Well, we're glad to that you shared your truck with us and the story behind it. Hope everybody found it interesting to learn about this pickup truck and what Mark has done to it. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks.
Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, how about giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. Thanks.